Hello together. Welcome to Fenucci's Repairs. Today on the bench we have a vintage car radio coming from a DeLorean motor car built in 1981. The brand name of the radio is Craig and the model number is W460. This hi-fi product features an AM and FM tuner as well as a tape deck. A special feature on this radio is the display which is integrated in the tape deck cover lid. Here you can see some of the integrated LEDs. Let's take a look as to how the failure presents itself. We have the radio connected to 12 volts of supply power and as we can see, after switching the unit on, the display is dead only a few status LEDs can be lit by pushing the buttons. Let's rattle the display. Nah. Well, let's rip it apart then. We begin disassembly by removing the upper steel cover and this plastic shell. The shell is attached by four screws. One here, let me turn it so you can see. One here, one here, one here, and one up here. Remove these screws with caution, because the plastic has become brittle through the years and the screw holes are already cracked. And here misery reveals itself. The orangish brownish thing here is a flex PCB or ribbon cable which is broken. We can also see a prior repair attempt here which obviously didn't work. So we will remove and change that flex PCB. To do that we have to further open up the radio by removing the upper steel lid. It is held in place by a few screws, two on the front, two on the heatsink here on the right side and one screw on the back in the upper left corner, right there. Usually this flex PCB can easily be pulled out of its socket here, but the prior repair attempt had the flex PCB's contacts soldered to the connector. Not easy to remove. If force doesn't help, more force will. Got it out finally, but we damaged the connector a little bit. We have one bent contact and I will have to put it back into its place. Done. Wir sehen hier 
schon. Here on the back side of the display we can see a lot of solder contacts. Next step coming up is the removal of the display from the chassis. First detach the spring. Und dann mit einer Zange vorsichtig. Then take some pliers and gently ease the bracket open which is holding the axle which is holding the display. Gently ease it open. Then gently remove the axle from the bracket and take care not to lose the spring. Completely remove the axle from the display. Then stow away the radio. Now we have the isolated display. Now we have to remove the LED display from its cover. It is hooked on to its clear cover on the one side and simply clipsed on the other. Here we can see the three clips. To open these clips, insert a blade and gently ease the clips open. The three clips can easily be opened, so use gentle force only. When the clips are open, tilt the display away from the cover and remove. Here we have the LED display which is held in this thin metal bracket. It can easily be pushed out. And there we have it. Display removed. The ribbon cable is stuck to the back side of the display by double sided tape. To remove it, stick something between the flex PCB and the display PCB and slowly ease off the flex PCB rather damaging the flex PCB than the rigid PCB on the back side of the display. When the flex PCB is free, we can desolder the solder points, stick something underneath the flex PCB, gently ease it upwards and then put your soldering iron on the solder points to melt them open and slowly remove the PCB from the solder joints. Here we can see a close-up of the original flex PCB. The solder pads on the edge of the PCB only cover the solder points by half a solder point. So in the 80s you had to make a solder bridge between the solder point and the flex PCB. Once all the solder joints have been opened, we can remove the flex PCB. Thanks for your service, we don't need you any longer. Because what we need is our new, genuine spare part. If you are interested in one of these spare parts, please send me an email under this address. Here we have the replacement part. It's not a 100% copy of the original, but form follows function.
Take the tracks for instance. These are laid out in more like rectangular shapes rather than the round shapes of the original. It'll do the job though. Then we have the connection points where the flex PCB is soldered to the rigid PCB of the display. The new flex PCB is bigger than the old one, completely covering the display PCB. Each track of the flex PCB ends in a solder point, which, when brought in coverage with the original solder point on the rigid PCB, can easily be soldered through. Thus, no more bridges to be soldered. Welcome to the 21st century. The replacement PCB comes with double-sided tape on its back, just like the original. It'll hold the flex PCB in position while soldering and afterwards. One important thing. In many YouTube videos about electronics you can see PCBs being cleaned with alcohol. Don't do it with this display. Because if you do, the alcohol will be drawn into the display by capillary forces and deposit whatever flux or dirt it is carrying inside your display and that's not where you want it. If there is still some sticky film on the backside of the display, leave it there. When soldering, we will utilize flux. Very little flux. But we will only wipe off the residue, not wash it off with alcohol. So, now let's position the flex PCB to the display. Take your time. This must be done thoroughly or else we'll end up having short circuits where we don't want them. Once the soldering points are exactly positioned on top of each other, we can remove the protective cover from the sticky tape on the back of the PCB. Like that. Reposition if necessary and then press down. Check both sides. Perfect. Or at least good enough for me. Which leaves us with a restoration of all these solder points. In preparation of the soldering work, we will put a tiny drop of flux on each of these solder points using a toothpick. Just a tiny amount. One little, little drop to each solder point. If you use way too much flux here, it will flow into the display while soldering using the mentioned before capillary effect, which can only be cleaned up by opening the display. Not a good idea. My soldering iron is heated up to 380 degrees Celsius and I'm using leaded solder. I'm using a clean fine tip 
put on a tiny amount of solder, then use a tool to push down the solder point and put the iron on for a second. Done. Again, push down, solder, stop. Done. And repeat. To wipe off the residue flux, I'm using a dry Q-tip with no alcohol. But as you can see, not a lot is coming off. And we're done here. I will test the solder connections by tapping on them with the metal tool. The sound will tell you whether you have a good connection or not. A hard clicking noise indicates a good connection. Now we have to put the display back into its metal bracket. Gently guide the flex PCB through the opening. Then reinsert the display into the metal bracket. Just like this. Let's clean the display before we put it back into its cover. And then reinsert the metal bracket into the cover. There's a little nose on the lower left side of the plastic cover, right there. That must go to the lower left side. And there are three clips and three hooks. These are the hooks, so hook them back into the openings and then clip in the display. Just like this. And here we have our restored display. For reassembly we do the steps of disassembly in reverse order. First we take the metal axle and put it back into its bracket, but this time we make sure that the new flex PCB goes between axle and metal bracket. We do this to lessen the stress of bending to the new flex PCB. It has to be a little longer for that, but that was implemented in the new design. Next, refit the spring to the axle and put it in the right position. Push it a little back so that the axle can be reset into its bracket, but watch out that the spring doesn't spring. Again, take some pliers and gently squeeze the bracket until the axle cannot move up or down any longer. Then put the spring back into its position and hook it up to the chassis. Like this. Now we can gently put back the Flex PCB's connector to the connector on the radio PCB. If the connector on the radio PCB side is a little too wide open so that the contacts do not make good contact to the new flex PCB, then you can put some thick tape like paper tape on the back of the flex PCB's connector, thus pushing down the PCB more into the connector and make good contact.
It's time to honk and test the connections. First take a piece of foam rubber, wedge it gently into the tape deck opening to hold open the lid. Now that we have access to the solder points, take a multimeter in continuity mode and check the connections one by one. We want to make sure that all signals we send in on the one side come out on the other. Dann auch hinten ankommt. Gut, 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 gut. Closing up time then. We commence the final test. Once we put power on, the display lights up. This is the clock function, but it's obviously not set. Switching on. The radio turns on the AM receiver. And we can fine tune here or do a search mode and we can see the digits running up. Only the last digit, the zero, doesn't move, but we can switch on FM and here we see it counting up, working perfectly. I would call this one a good repair.